You are watching Excess LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the March 20th, 2024 meeting of the LaPorte County Board of Commissioners. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportecounty.org. We ready, Kevin? Progress. Welcome everyone to the LaPorte County Commissioner's Meeting Wednesday, March 20th, 2024 at 6 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Cheryl Lisinski, can you start us with the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Roll call. Commissioner Brzezinski. Here. I heard here. Barely. Can you say it again? Here. Hold on one second. We have to turn you up. Try again. Here. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> we went from one extreme to another. <laughs> okay, now try. Too loud. Still too loud. <laughs> I bet you can. Working on the sound checks here. Try now. Try now. Okay, try now. Testing. One, two, three. Yeah, yeah. Much closer. Okay, so we know that Rich Mrzenski's here. We can continue with road call. <laughs> sure, uh, just, sure. just for clarity, uh, claiming medical exemption here this evening, uh, Commissioner Brzezinski. Is your speaker working? I don't hear him. I don't. I don't know. Can you hear me? I heard you now. Okay. Sorry about that. No. Uh, j just for clarity, you're claiming a medical exemption tonight, uh, Commissioner Mrzinski. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So noted. Commissioner Gramarosa. Present. Commissioner Haney. Present. All three are present. Okay. Consider approval of the agenda. Uh, Madam President, I have an item to add here, a uh, travel request from Judge Stalbrink, and I'd like to put that under requests. Uh, Madam President, I also have a couple of additions to uh, the agenda. Uh, I would imagine probably under new business. Uh, consider change in the county employee handbook. Consider policy change for using blind copy and email. Consider resignation of director of facilities. Consider appointment of director of facilities. And under 11B, uh, we can take that off of our agenda. That's a moot point, uh, urging the, the governor to uh, veto something that he's already approved, he's already signed it. So we can remove that. And I'll make motion to. Uh, Approve the agenda as amended. Second. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Consider approval of March 6th, 2024 minutes. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those. I apologize. We have one call about approving the agenda as a Okay, motion to consider the motion. We had a, a motion and a second. We need a roll call. Commissioner Gramarosa? Aye. Commissioner Brzezinski? Aye. Commissioner Haney? Aye. Three ayes. Consider approval of March 6, 2024 minutes. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, roll call. Commissioner Haney? Aye. 
Commissioner Brzezinski? Aye. Commissioner Gramarosa? Aye. Three ayes. Consider approval of our special meeting for on March 11th, 2024. Roll call. A motion to approve. All right, motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Mr. Gramarosa? Aye. Mr. Haney? Aye. Mr. Rosinski? Aye. Three ayes. Consideration of claims, beginning with payroll. Commissioners, for, we have payroll for the period ending 3-8-2024 in the amount of $1,487,870. Motion to approve as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Commissioner Brzezinski. Aye. Commissioner Gramarosa. Aye. Commissioner Haney. Aye. Three ayes. Then we have operating expense claims same, for the same period in the amount of $2,778,876.54. Motion to approve as presented. Uh, before I second, I, I have a question to the I don't. I don't understand it. I'm, I'm not an insurance guy. Uh, but this um, for three seven twenty four East Isle. That's our. That's stop gap right for the. Is that uh, for the uh, health insurance? Yes, that is an, uh, an amount that we need to send to them to keep the uh, the policy for another year. It's sixty thousand three hundred and sixty dollars. Correct. Uh, yeah, I, so I started doing some research on that. Um, since we've started this um, clinic, we we paid three hundred and forty-eight thousand five hundred sixty-seven dollars and sixty-four cents of taxpayer money for this healthcare thing. I thought it was doing so good, saving the county money. That's a lot of money. I, I don't understand how that works. Are are, are you? Um... Okay, so the East Isles is a insurance policy um, so that if, you know, let's say a million dollar claim comes in, the county's policy then is somewhat related to some of our stop loss and, 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 and different things. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I, is there a disconnect there? You're uh, conflating the two together or do you, do you understand the difference there between the services provided? Yeah, just so it's clear the East Isles is exclusively related to the stop loss carrier. The, uh, any type of claim, claim goes above, I think it's 200,000, right? Not 250. Two or 250. Uh, any two, type two of claim million, goes right? above that. They step in and pay us the amount that's above that. So it's not related to the health clinic. This is part of how, you know, we self insure up to 200, two hundred thousand dollars uh they step in and take on the risk based upon the premiums that we pay them this sixty thousand dollars um is um what we need to pay them to keep it going they look at our loss history if we had a low loss history for the prior year we might get away with contributing nothing but based upon um uh, the, the history of losses um um, this is a not unusual amount of money. I could try to find out what we contributed last year. I think it was a fairly similar amount, uh, but this is the amount that needs to be contributed to, to fund to fund the, the program. So, okay, well, thank you for the, uh, the explanation. So the question is, um, when we're hiring these companies, are these companies going out to bid? I mean, are these, because I know like here we have West Isles, East and Isles. so East Isles, and we've so far we've paid three hundred and forty-eight thousand five hundred and sixty-seven dollars. And um, when we do these contracts with these companies, are we actually putting them out to bid? Are we looking and shopping to make sure that we have the right company and we can get I, something cheaper? I believe so. I would encourage you to speak with uh, Mr. Uh, Many of General Insurance. They're the ones that oversee and make recommendations to the insurance committee of. Uh, who the stop loss carrier would be. I, I believe that this is a solid arrangement. We, we, we pass this contract on to you, not because this is something that I initiate, but because it has a history going back to the prior auditor of, of the auditor's office being the reporting agent uh, to the firm. So uh, to, to e styles for this, the paperwork, the emails came to me when I started taking office. So we have no horse in this race. Uh, this is this is the the legacy firm that's been used going a, a, a while back to be the stop loss carrier. I would advise talking to uh, the folks at General Insurance as to whether uh, there are better options than e styles. But uh, I think they do a pretty diligent job on on this type of thing. But uh, that, that's the one, the, that's the one to talk to. Sure. I, 
Nyhart, are they, uh, I know that they're a stop loss company as well. No. So what do they do? No. Um, yeah, Nyhart's later on the agenda up for approval, obviously, that's why you bring it up. Uh, Nyhart has to, I'm looking at the contract right here, is, uh, Nyhart has to do with um, our obligations to report on uh, pensions because we're now a, or have been a, a gap gap reporting, um, generally accepted accounting principles reporting entity in the county. And NIHART does the complicated calculations that involve um, our adhering to GASB 75, which is generally accepted, generally the Government Accounting Standards Board's bulletin number 75 to make sure that our reporting, their report gets appended into our, um, into our audit, into our financial statements so that our financial statements with regard to pensions specifically and other other other, other benefits related to pensions are um that the reporting is uh, up to snuff so the, they're reporting uh, a reporting entity so i guess we can talk about it when we get to that um so we're currently on the operating expense claims um yeah, I'll second. Second the motion to, so we uh, have a motion and a second yeah second. Roll call commissioner haney Aye. Commissioner Gramarosa. Aye. Commissioner Rosinski. Aye. Three ayes. Thank you. Public comment. We're open for public comment. Steve Hollowfield, 6782 East, 100 South Mill Creek. Good evening. As I've said previously, I will continue to keep the solar problem on your minds and in front of you so you are aware of what's going on. Hopefully you're beginning to see what the communities throughout on our thoughts are on all this. The project for approximately 40 years will have long lasting effects on our county as well as the communities and neighborhoods that is involved in the middle of it. I ask that all of you do some research as we have and you will find that there are far more downfalls to this than there is upside potential. It will outlast all of us and probably some of you our children and would be leaving a legacy to our grandchildren who possibly will have to clean that up. Don't let this become the next super fun site like Chalmers and Fisher Caleb became. In closing, I must also remind you that there is an election this year, and two of you are up. Elkhart County Farm Bureau taught their commissioners that elections have consequences. Two were voted out in 22, and the remaining one will be out this fall because they have chosen to go against the wishes of the people who are on there, who are their bosses. I hope you all remember that you are here to represent the people and not some foreign corporation and a few select landowners, some of which don't vote here or even live here. Thank you. Mike Ekovich, Jr., 2828 North, 500 East. I'd just like to speak briefly on our solar ordinance. Um, it is very vague when it comes to industrial solar. I know it's a very new ordinance LaPorte County has, but it was done during COVID. I think if it was done in the current time, there'd be a lot more uh, input, current material that would strengthen this to uh, better protect the community here in the future. So I highly... Uh, I guess I'd appreciate if some thought was given to a moratorium in the future on solar until our ordinance has been strengthened. Thank you. Public comment is still open. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Dean White. I live at uh, 3066 North Highway 35, uh, the former Pine Lake Grange. Uh, this I'd like to uh, hand out a picture, please. Sure. Um, I'm here to address three issues uh, to point out. Uh, my first issue is the engine braking that takes place as trucks approach uh, this downhill curve on 35 on their way into Laporte uh, on the southbound. Uh, this is a slight curve that requires trucks to slow down, and yet many of them choose the engine brake to accomplish the slowdown. Uh, this is quite loud and disturbing to all of the uh, residents in that area, uh, including me. Um, it's particularly disturbing at night. Uh, I'd like to request that the county install a no engine braking sign on the approach to this curve. I spoke with the State Highway Department and they said that it is the responsibility of the county to install such a sign. Um, and 
previously, I requested them to put in an arrow uh, properly for this curve, which they did. And also, um, they put in a speed limit sign that uh, also lowered the speed limit when you got to that curve. Um, so, so uh, they, I've been told by the state highway that it's the responsibility of the county to put in the sign. Uh, there's been uh, multiple accidents at this curve, including fatalities. The state highway department finally put up the arrow signs. Uh, secondly, I have given you some photos to look at. Um, this is an unsightly, unattractive property located in LaPorte County along US Highway 35 again. Uh, I travel 35 daily and um, there's much more heavy traffic than there used to be with the growth of LaPorte and LaPorte County. Um, the address of the property is 4747 North Highway 35. It's on the east side of the highway, just south of the railroad tracks. It's an automobile junkyard. It's a terrible sight for our residents and for our visitors traveling north and southbound on this Highway 35. Um, the property is in the trust of William and Mary Ann Duran. There is no privacy fencing blocking its view. It's, it's horrible, uh, particularly in the wintertime when there are no leaves on the trees and brush at the front of the property. Obviously, the brush hides the unsightliness in the summertime. Uh, this property degrades the vis visual appearance of Laporte County. Uh, for years, nothing has been done. I would like to request that the county enforce the installation of a privacy fence by the property owner's uh, expense um, as an alternative. They could close the business and clean up the area. Uh, this is not a viable business. We rarely see any activity at this location. And um, the third and last uh, issue that I want to bring up is uh, the Vista view at uh, Waverly and Pine Lake uh, on US Highway again as well. Uh, this was once a cleared view backdrop for the sign as a entrance to Soldiers Memorial Park. You, you could see the wetlands, you could see Stone Lake, and the sign for Soldiers Memorial Park uh, was appropriate. Um, but unfortunately, it's been neglected for years and allowed to become overgrown. However, it can be easily become beautiful again. It can be an attractive view of Soldiers Memorial Park and the wetlands and Stone Lake in one sweeping view. It's one of the most beautiful views of the park. Exclamation point. It is on property owned by Laporte City and County, approximately 70% County, 23% City, and 7% Highway. And for months now, I have encouraged, promoted, and educated this Board of Commissioners to understand we have a limited window of time every year to clear this view, and, and once again, uh, for its beauty and grandeur. Um, thankfully, Joe Haney has ho joyfully helped to bring all the constituents together to accomplish this beautiful endeavor, including the City of Laporte and the City Parks Department. Um, they're in, in favor of helping. Also, the LaPorte County Parks Department, Jeremy, and many other uh, volunteers would, uh, are uh, able to help. Uh, and all of everyone has spent precious time uh, putting ideas, strategies together uh, for several weeks. Uh, so uh, please note that this clearing was approved years ago by the county commissioners and also supported by the LaPorte County Sheriff's Department for help. However, we are now at a roadblock to clear this view. Um, Joe Haney cannot finalize and initiate this alone. Um, Mr. Rosinski and um, Connie Camarosa, you are the only ones uh, uh, that can make this project pull through. I've uh, put in numerous calls uh, and have not gotten any calls back uh, for a couple of weeks uh, fr from you, Connie. And you are the uh, 
liaison of the highway department. And everyone is waiting for the okay from you and Rich. Uh, the highway department has the equipment and the city has the manpower. Uh, remember, our window of opportunity is quickly closing and please don't uh, miss out on this wonderful collaboration of city and county volunteers as well for the betterment of Laporte. It only takes two commissioners to approve, but it would be honorable for all three commissioners to agree, county, city, and community benefit. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take it under advisement. Public comment. Uh, this is Tony Kravitz from 1316 Ohio Street. I'm a Michigan City man. Uh, uh, good evening, uh, distinguished and honorable Laporte County Commissioners. I want to express my gratitude to your county commissioners. Last Friday, the day before we hosted our semi-state for the State Boys Basketball Championship, uh, we um, you, you sent your uh, crews from the county out to clean up the litter on County Road 400 North. As you all know, the county now has jurisdiction over the entire length of County Road 400 North, all the way from all the way through to Ohio Street. I want to thank you for taking control of that. We, I, I just pray that you do a much better job of, of maintaining that stretch of road, especially with the, the, the striping and the paving and, and just the whole maintenance of what the city's done over the last 40 years. That, that stretch of road, it needs striped real bad. I know the plan is to have that spec warehouse going in onto the old Sovinsky farm. I hope that goes in. That would be a good, uh, good, good, good investment. Maybe bring some jobs and some more commerce to, to LaPorte County and Michigan City. You know, that's in the U.S. 421 I-94 County Tech District. Uh, I've got a I, I understand right now Michigan this City doesn't have an early vote center. Uh, it, may, maybe perhaps go to a redevelopment commission. You can put a maybe like a, a FEMA trailer or a, a, a porta potty on their uh, gray field site that they maintain at 5th and Pine. Uh, you, might, you know, we got plenty of green space where you can utilize that for it. Just a suggestion. I, uh, I'd like to get a site plan on the 8th and Wabash uh, property. County-owned building. You, you purchased that in 2023 from John Larry Figueres. He spent a lot, we spent a lot of money on that. Before that was the complex. I know Figueres is at a liquor store, and a, clothing, a, a women's clothing store, a men's suit store, and a full-time shoe store in there. Uh, I'd like to have a site plan on that for once the snow, once you get the but, you know, we, yeah, and I know we had the flooding with the courthouse. You're about ready to get that all open back up. Well, uh, the last thing we want to do there is we don't want another situation like you had with the county home. So I, I know we don't do question and answer and back and forth, but i just like to get an update on that. We don't want another, like another uh, Six and Willard, which is still a city-owned property, which was the you know, uh, West Side substation. We don't want like a ban. Don't give it to the city. I know Mayor Perry wanted to take control why don't you give that to the city for a waiving the permit fees at the courthouse renovation? I just don't let the city have it. You really need to sell it and get a good market price. That's a real prime piece of real estate you got there. I just want to thank you and, I, and good night. Thank you, Tommy. Public comment. Do we have anyone else for public comment on Zoom? Anyone in the audience for public comment? Closing public comment. Moving on to department head comments. Do we have any department heads on Zoom? Do we have some uh, high school students there this evening? We do. They could uh, tell us where they're from. Uh, South Central, all three of us are. All three of them are from South Central. Very good, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Madam President, I, I, I have just a couple things here real quick. Um, for the uh, Vista View, um, City of Laporte has been uh, helpful with that. I've been speaking quite a bit with uh, Tim Frankie there, assigning an arborist to that to be able to uh, tag what trees should or shouldn't be removed from that property as well. I'd like to see if there's an agreement from the board. I would make a motion now to move forward um, with uh, trying to tidy that our piece of property up there in conjunction with the city. 
Well, actually, I had a meeting with both Park District from the city and with our county uh, Park District, and both of them, it's a big undertaking, and neither one of them have the time nor the effort to do it. It's on a slope, and there is concerns of whether our trucks can be on their slide-offs and that it's just way too steep. So uh, between all the departments that had met, it was determined that it was not feasible to um, do that project. That was part of the reason why the city was going to get an arborist out there to make sure that any tree removal wouldn't affect the slope of the, of the um, have any fall off from the slope for what would be removed, but if that's your position, so be it. Um, it's not my position. That is what was decided in the meeting with all the different departments. So do you have anything else uh, you'd I, like to add? I, I do. I do. Um, uh, very quickly, uh, on the East Isles, that's something that's uh, determined by the, uh, that's put out and searched for and gone through the options for that on the insurance board. Um, that's something that uh, you replaced me on earlier this year. Um, I'm more than happy to undertake that again, so I would make a motion to be placed back on the health insurance board. There's a motion for uh, Mr. or Commissioner Haney to return to the insurance board. Is there a second? No. Okay, thank you. And one last item here, I um, just want to address, I've, I've gotten a lot of uh, emails uh, as well as phone calls about um, the solar, uh, possible solar projects here in the county um, from, from both sides, uh, property owners who are concerned about the value of their property, property owners who have had uh, farmland in their family from, and I want to just put a human element on this because this isn't easy isn't going to be an easy decision moving forward. Um, when I came on board in January of 21, uh, I was on the plan commission, and one of the one of the first things I did getting on the plan commission was push for solar ordinance. We didn't have one, and at the time, had a solar uh, company come in, they could have just put up a sol you know large industrial solar field, whatever size they wanted to, without a peep to the county, other than you know the standard you know handful of permits. There was nothing putting any guardrails around that. Uh, one of the things I also pushed for was a bond. So the, one of the biggest concerns I think every single person in, in, in this county would agree with is that if solar panels, you know, large solar panel fields go in, how do we assure that this property is made, returned at the end of its life cycle? Or as we've seen from around the county, or I should say around the country, there's a number of companies, be it here in this country, globally, that go out of business. They go bankrupt before they're done. And you have some counties and or states, cities, municipalities that didn't have any guardrails in place for that. So they're left with these sites of just panels just sitting there because the company's got a business. A lot of times another company will come in, buy it for pennies on the dollar, and then do some way to reclaim some of the stuff to make a buck or two, but it's not exactly an ideal situation to be hoping that would happen. Uh, so this bond that was in there, um, that I had put in there, is also pegged to be marked toward inflation and be reassessed every, every so often to make sure that not only is it uh, the funds in place now uh, to cover the cost, but 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years down the road, as these things come to the end of our life cycle, we've seen just what the inflation has been in this country over the past two years. You know, who knows how much it's going to cost to actually tear these things out in the future. And, and that's the goal. And one of the things with our solar ordinance is that um, the language is in there to return it to exactly how it was found. So ripping every single part and component out before moving forward, which, which is what we want. Um, one of the things that, that, that I would really like input from from all the citizens are specific language, and, and, and I mean specific language we can do to tighten tighten up this any further. Because as it sits now, we've got a pretty good ordinance, but pretty good isn't necessarily as good as it can get. I think we can, we can tighten it up and do better, but we've got to have specific language, and I've tried to look at different things from, from around the state, what's been incorporated. One of the issues that we could run into if we try and do a multi-year ban, it's getting challenged by the courts, because you try and ban anything completely, um, their legal recourse, and I think uh, uh, Planning Commission Attorney BG had addressed that at a previous meeting, some of the issues of complete bans versus putting in specific guardrails that can protect things, setbacks, uh, issues with wetlands and whatnot. So this is a this is a lot of complicated moving parts here to make sure we get it right. Um, also, I just want to put a human component on it because we have a lot of folks that come up and talk. But one of the one of the message one of the conversations I had was with an elderly couple. And they're 
getting older in age, retiring. They've got bills, medical bills. They want to retire. They also want to keep their farmland in their family, right? It's, it's, you know, this is a generation farm. They want to pass that, pass some of that. They want to pass that on to their children. They don't want to sell the land, um, but they just, they're, they're getting too old to work it. Um, so it's difficult to look a family like that in the eye and say, you can't do with your land what you want to do with it, even though it's been in your family for generations. You can't put guard, safeguards in place for your family to be able to pass that land on after you pass away, return it back to farmland so that your children later in life, if they want to farm it or whatever they want to do with that land, they can do. Um, that's tough. Um, one, of the issue, one of the issues that uh, they brought up was they could lease their land out and farm it. Um, you know, for GMO corn and soybeans, which is primarily what's grown there. Um, you know, we set aside the fact that we've got prime farmland going, going to um, the nutrients and minerals being sucked out of the ground into GMO corn that's primarily going for ethanol or shipped overseas for industrial processing in China. Um, that's, that is what it is. But at the same time, those rates come in about $250, $300 an acre, depending on how many acres you have, the, the soil consistency, what the ground's rated. Um, these solar companies are going are gonna, to are gonna pay this family, for example, three to four times that amount. Um, how do you tell somebody that their financial security um, farm has been in their family for generations? They can't do that with their land. They could. Um, one, of, one of the other parts of it is if you have people that are in financial difficulties and they have to get rid of their land and they do sell it to someone, even if, you know, obviously we don't want the land going to China, but even it comes to a local company here, we see a... Um, a processor of chicken that's uh, hit the news recently, and they're laying off thousands and thousands of U.S. workers in favor of illegals. Um, but what if they bring a confined feeding operation to that land instead of solar panels? Um, there's no variance that's needed for a confined feeding operation in LaPorte County. Um, they could bring a confined feeding operation for a hog farm. Um, I don't think anyone would, would argue that a hog farm next to their property would be in any way better than solar panels. So it's it's very it's very difficult position to be able to look at the concerns from neighbors and, and community members as well as to look at the family of an elderly couple and try and tell them they can't do what's what they want with the land that's been in their family for generations. So this is this is not an easy cut and dry situation and and one of the things that I've learned is being an elected official, when you look into the eyes of people on both sides, especially something that's this uh, that's this uh, polarizing. It's not an easy decision, and that, that's why I really would like to see some really good extra stringent language added into our ordinance that we don't have now that I'm searching for, and I know that there's other folks out there looking for it. I would hope that we can get that language. Um, so for those who are kind of curious as to both sides of that, I thought it was important to put a, put a human aspect on it. It's not just these big conglomerate solar companies that are going to be the benefit of, of, of if they put these panels in. It's also some folks here locally, and it's, it's tough. It's tough for everybody. Um, I don't know. Anyway, thank you for your time. Okay, so we did have a public hearing on this um, the other day, and a lot of this was covered. I know that some of the concerns I went um, this weekend and I had met with some of the farmers. And some of the concerns is, and I know um, Commissioner Haney, you were the one that signed, you were one of the three that signed um, the last ordinance or the only ordinance that was put out there and it was very, very vague. And one of the concerns that the farmers have is that um, you're under the belief that it covers 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years for the, for the expand of the whole time that those solars are on there and indeed in doing research it is only 15 years. It would be the 5, 10, and 15 year period. And without calling people back up here, because we're not going to make this, this is a commissioner's meeting. It's not a solar meeting. And that's why we had a solar meeting a couple of weeks ago. Um, but the information that you're putting out there is not exactly what the information that the farmers are getting. They're getting that it's only 15 years. And these farms are going to exist for anywhere between 32 and 38 years. And after the 15 year period, there's no coverage of no, whether that bond is not gonna to continue to grow with, with the cost of what it's gonna to take to decommission it. But I do appreciate you um, coming up here and, and um, making another segment about the uh, solar farms. Thank you.
Do we have any other department heads? Judge Freeman? Uh, yes, thank you, Commissioners. Um, I'm on the agenda this evening to request permission for uh, four individuals from the problem solving court to attend the annual um, All Eyes Conference in Anaheim, it is from May 22nd to May 25th. I know Veterans Treatment Court has already um, come to you requesting that. And um, if you need me to send a letter with the names, uh, I can certainly do that. But just wanted to uh, get your approval on that. And then uh, Judge Stahlbrink will also be sending individuals at that time? That is correct. I wasn't sure whether Judge Stahlbrink would be um, on the phone, but Yes, um, through reentry court, he has an additional um, maybe two or three individuals that will be going to Anaheim. So, what would be the pleasure of the commission? Can we make a motion and approve this tonight, and then at a later date, they can go ahead and send us the amounts that are going from each um, department? I'd make a motion to approve the uh, travel request for both. Um, Judge Friedman and Judge Stahlbrink uh, for their uh, travel to the Drug Court Professionals uh, Association here. I second that motion. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call. Commissioner Haney. Aye. Commissioner Haney. Aye. Commissioner Gramrosa. Aye. Commissioner Brzezinski. Aye. Three ayes. Okay. Thank you very much, Commissioners. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other department head? Heather Stevens, LaPorte County Clerk. Um, I want to clear something up right away. We do have a couple of options for early voting in Michigan City. So one way or another, there will be early voting in Michigan City. I've heard this a few times now, and it's, it's just not the case that it's just not happening. Um, speaking of early voting in Michigan City, well, we, we do have a couple of options. I would like to... I would like to hold on to the option of Eighth and Wabash. And that is that is simply, be, and it's not an ideal location. We were hoping that the complex would be ready, people would be moved out, we'd have a little more space. Um, and unfortunately, that's not the case. But people are used to that location. It, it is, it's, it's centrally located. Um, and again, it's just people, people are creatures of habit and that's where they're all gonna go to. So I, we, we are happy to make do if that's what's needed. And again, we do have other options. We have an election board meeting on Friday. The board will vote as to where they'd like to be. But I just wanna know that that option is still available in that, in that lobby area for us. So that's my question. So I'm confused because you sent out an email, you told us that the 8th Street was not viable for you. And then you told us for, sure. to, for us to find locations for you. And then last week you said you were going to have a meeting and that your board was going to approve it first. And it was going to happen before the commissioner's meeting. Now you're coming to the commissioner's meeting because you haven't had it. So you keep on no, so we did have a meeting. I had, so right now I'm dealing with deadlines, 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 deadlines. Everybody thinks that, you know, when you're administering an election, you have a couple of deadlines. We have daily deadlines. So that was my mistake. Um, I thought that we had to have this wrapped up on that Friday. That's, that's not the issue. But we do have to wrap it up this week because we have to issue notice. So again, we just want to know that the option is there. It's, it's not an ideal location for the people that work it, but they are troopers, and we would rather have the, the better voter turnout. And, you know, we're... So, while so you were again, we just want to know that it's an option. So while you were going back and forth, I have secured um, the Springfield, the old Springfield Library from the hospital. And that would be Cool Spring. Cool Spring? Yeah, Cool Spring. Okay, that's not that's not within the the city limits of Michigan City. And so that we need to be with we need to be in Michigan City. Okay, that's why we're requesting the use of Eighth and Wabash again. It's because the voters are used to it. 
And then what are you going to do for, because I know that I volunteered on Saturdays to open up an office for the Saturdays. Actually, we had um, Mr. Pollen and Coroner Swanson have both offered the use of their restroom facilities for the needs of early voting for the staff. And that will include the Saturdays. They've been wonderful to work with. So what, what are the locations, what are all the locations that you are requesting now? So right now, what I'm requesting from you in Michigan City is just the, the, the option of 8th and Wabash, right where we've been previously. And where would the other and again, locations be? So we still have the Wanata location. Um, we are, and again, this vote is this Friday. But I needed to know that this was optional before I present it to the board. Um, we are also looking at a location in the east part of the county. And then for LaPorte, because again, the complex is unavailable, the State Street Church is unavailable, but Nate Lokes has offered the 210 Division Street location. It is, it is perfectly, it's, it's everything. It's ADA compliant. It's, he's willing to, He's willing to give it to the, the circuit court clerk's office for the month of early voting. And that would be, but I do need you guys to sign the same contract that we've signed for State Street Church. So again, I need I need support from you guys in order for the for the election board to move forward. And what would be the location in the east end of the county? Right now we have I think we have three locations to choose from. So again, that, that is all being presented to the election board on Friday. We have a meeting at 2.30. So, and then they'll make that decision. So it was one of the attorneys from the election board that had sent out something to us saying that not only because it has always been where the clerk has presented locations, brought it before the commission, and then the commission mm -hmm. takes the recommendations. You sent out yes. an email and you said it was the responsibility of the commissioners. And then one of the attorneys from the election board actually said, no, it was a combination of, of all three, the clerk, so, the election board and the commissioners. So can you give us the, the three locations that you're going to choose from on the east end of the county? Do you have? I believe it is the Lincoln Township community building, the Wills Township community building, and something was mentioned about a third building, but it was more, it was way north, so I'm not sure that that one's even really being considered. Okay. All right. I'd make a motion to... My, my concerns are, are 8th Street and the 210 Division. I just need to know that those are good to go, so that if we, if we put them into the vote center plan, Somebody doesn't come back later and say, oh, no, nope, can't use it. I make a motion of support for uh, offering the 8th Street and Wabash location for uh, early voting as well as supporting uh, 210 Division. And then my only other question is, can you use Cool Spring Library? The last time that we were in that library, the workers were, they, they struggled. It's not maintained. It's not. It's not cleaned, and the the guess is that there's a lot of mold in that building. It's not I, an ideal location inside anymore. When when we first started using it back, uh, I know we used it in 2022. It was slightly slightly better condition. Same thing for for coming up on the end for the 2020 election. Um, but it's been four years now and without any maintenance. And I, I don't even know if they're running the heat in there in the winter. Um, I don't think no. they are. And that's, it's, it's getting, it's getting rough in there. We appreciate the offer from, from them, of course, but it's, of course. It, it'd take a lot of, it'd take our facility staff a lot of time to get that cleaned up and prepared if it was used. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Commissioner Brzezinski. Aye. Commissioner Gramarosa. Aye. Commissioner Haney. Aye. Three ayes. Thank you. 
Thank you. Do we have any other department heads? Any other department heads? Closing department head comment. Request. We've already um, discussed the travel for Judge Freeman and Judge Stalbrink, so we'll move on to B. Consider permission to approach the council for 20% grant match, matching funds for bridge 46 and 189 reconstruction county comprehensive plan and construction phase of bridge 512. Good evening, commissioners. <clears throat> so uh, recently, county received four separate grants. We were awarded four separate grants, three from IDOT and one from NERPC. <clears throat> um, Bridge 46, uh, we received 2.2 million. Uh, Bridge 189, 1.8 million. And Bridge 512, uh, Michigan Boulevard by Johnson Road, 3.68 million. And the comprehensive plan update, uh, 144,000. Uh, they, they all cover 80% of the total project cost. So I'm requesting uh, that I attend the council meeting for the remaining 20 of each of those projects. And that's my request tonight. Second. Second. request to go to the council. Excuse me, commissioners. I'm sorry for interrupting. Uh, Mr. Bishop, on your agenda item under Bridge 512 is. It's 80% of the 4 million, and that comes to the 3.6, did you say, or the number you offered? I just want to know. Yeah, 3.68, you're saying. Okay. Yeah. For construction and construction inspection. That's the correct number. Thank you. Motion to approve Mitch's request to go to the council. Second. And, and part of these grants, uh, I actually attended the council meeting ahead of time when I applied, um, and they gave uh, a support letter at the time and they signed it, so they know about this already. So we have a motion and a second. Roll call. Commissioner Gramarosa. Aye. Commissioner Haney. Aye. Commissioner Rosinski. Aye. Three ayes. Thanks. So now we have consider permission to travel to Tampa, Florida, July 11th through the 16th to attend the 2024 NACO conference for the recorder. So um, as we open this up, I have um, been informed that uh, recently we sent a councilman to a conference in Washington. And there's some question, you know, the request came to us like two hours before the actual meeting. And now it's not going to be paid out of the election, out of the, um, let me get my bearing straight here, elected officials fund. And then I came to learn that there are some of these meetings or some of these conferences that we go to just because we want to go and we learn from them and then there's others that are required of us in the position that we're in and so i think that we have to we should probably table this because we, we we need to start looking at all these conferences that everyone's going to and find out that if it is required of their department and i'm not saying that that this is not one that may be required, but we have to start looking at like what is required and what it and what we're taking just because we know that there's conferences out there and that we can take them. What I was going to ask if this is work for some sort of uh, qualification or certification uh, because our uh, AIC has a lot of conferences that probably cover the same thing. So, uh, but if it's for a certification, that's a different story. But uh, that's a, uh, I'd like a little clarification on exactly what it's for. 
and we're still very early in the year because we're in March now and this is for July so no one would be missing out on anything if we just do a little bit of research. Motion to table the table that issue. So we have a motion to table. Do we have a second? I'll step down as president and second that. Roll call. Commissioner Gramarosa. Aye. Commissioner Haney. Nay. Commissioner Brzezinski. Aye. Two to one motion passes. Okay, going on to D. Consider road closure for the annual triathlon and duathlon in Soldier Memorial Park on July 13th. Ashley, I hope I don't blow this, Kowalski, triathlon race director. Motion to approve. We do this every year for many, many years. Second. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Rosinski. Aye. Commissioner Haney. Aye. Commissioner Gramarosa. Aye. Three zero. Okay. Under old business, consider bid recommendation for paving. But oh, help me here. But two newest materials, materials, signs, and pavement markers. So we had four classes that we bid um, for our annual spring bids. First was signs. Um, we had two bidders, Eisborn Associates and Michael Todd. We're going to accept both bids because the products we use vary in price from price to price. So we'll just use whoever's cheaper on the product. Um, the second class, bituminous materials. There's two sections to this bid. Um, first is the um, material only. Two people bid that, bitmap products and asphalt materials. We'll accept both bids. Asphalt materials will be our primary bidder and bitmap would be our secondary bidder. Um, the alternate bid in this was for the application for the chip seal. Um, there was three bidders, bitmap products, central paving and pavement solutions. Um, we'll use central paving as our primary bidder and bitmap products will be used um, as our secondary. Pavement Solutions bid was high, so we are not going to accept their bid. And then we had um, two bidders for our hat asphalt concrete, Reith Riley and Milestone. Um, we're going to accept both bids. Reith Riley will be our primary bidder and Milestone will be our secondary bidder. And for pavement markings, we had two bidders, Avalanche Snow Removal and the Air Marking Company. And we'll accept both bids because they have different prices in what they stripe. Thank you. I make a motion to accept the recommendations from our highway superintendent with preference given to the lowest prices uh, for each category. So we have a motion and a second. Roll call. Commissioner Haney. Aye. Commissioner Brzezinski. Aye. Commissioner Gramarosa. Aye. Three ayes. Thank you. Thank you. And a new business. We have consider contract for Howard E. Nayhart Company. Oh, did I miss one? No, you're coming up. Let me repeat that. We have consider contract for Howard E. Nayhart Company for the auditor. Motion to approve the uh, contract. This is our um, general accounting uh, issues that need to be uh, tidied up that we deal with every year. I think you asked a good question, though, Commissioner uh, Amoroso. Uh, did we get, did we accept uh, bids for this uh, contract? Well, and again, could you answer that? Do you ever put any of these these um, contracts out to bid? Um, we we have not done that for this one. Um, they've been used for years. Um, they are highly specialized, but um, a highly specialized firm. So, and they come recommended by our main accounting, our main uh, uh, firm, Baker Tilly, that oversees our gap our gap reports. So, uh, uh, we can make inquiry of whether there's other uh, other other firms that could uh, could bid this out. And I understand you use a lot of these companies years after years after years. Um, but just like everybody else, we use um, certain companies for bridges, and 
you feel like there needs to be transparency because we have to put things out to bid why you know in the three years that you've been the auditor why do you not feel like these contracts should be put out to bid well you're putting words in your mind about so i don't appreciate that characterization at all um but um um the bidding requirements that i've objected to are if it's between 50 and 150 thousand dollars you get quotes if it's over 150 thousand dollars it must go out to bid this is a contract for about 7300 dollars but yeah um i'm more than happy to uh i, I was going to suggest we could table this anyway because i did want to ask baker tilly with our knowing now that the state for the 2023 audit is going to be using a um, non-gap based audit and use the annual financial report instead be a so-called compliance audit if there's something different about the nature of what Nyhart would do. So if it's the commission's pleasure to table this till the next meeting, I'd, I'd uh, welcome that uh, for the purposes of uh, discussing with Baker Tilly. We had an opening uh, conference today actually with the uh, State Board of Accounts on the 2021 and 22 audits, as you know. Uh, but for the purposes of talking to Baker Tilly about potential other firms to, to bid or give quotes, I should say, um, and also whether the nature of the 2023 audit being a uh, AFR-based annual financial report based versus a traditional gap audit, if there's anything that changes specific to NIHART, um, I certainly welcome you tabling this until the next meeting if you'd like. Uh, change motion to uh, table this to the next meeting and also note that this is a professional services contract, which is um, slightly different in nature, but anyway, motion to table. Excuse me. I would like to motion Excuse to me. table. Madam uh, President, I'm just being nitpicky here. I'm sorry. We say motion to table a lot, but it's let's. I think it's just a, a definite postponement for a definite time. So maybe to make sure it gets on the agenda, the next meeting we'll just postpone it to a definite time, which will be their next regularly conducted meeting. I admit, I'm in my motion as such. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. I second that motion. I don't want to uh, entertain the uh, no bid contract here. So we have a motion and a second. Roll call. Commissioner Rosinski. Aye. Commissioner Gramoroso. Aye. Commissioner Haney. Aye. Three ayes. Uh, Madam President, before we move on, quick, uh, quick point of order. Could um, I amend the previous motion uh, prior for the election locations to change i believe i said 212 division um, to change that to 210 brighton the actual location for that one is 210 brighton uh division was something else she said division though did she send uh, you a text and change the um I'm, I'm i'm pretty sure it's 210 is the clerk still on i'm here i'm here C can you yes, clarify that for us Sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I also texted uh, your attorney because I did misspeak. It is 210 Brighton would be the location in the court. Okay, thank you. So let the record show that the text was sent to Mr. Haney and to the attorney. Do we have to take a vote on that? I made a motion. So we have a motion. Do we have a second to change the address on that? Sure, second. So we have a motion and a second. Roll call. Commissioner Gramarosa. Aye. Commissioner Brzezinski. Aye. Commissioner Haney. Aye. Motion passes 3-0. Okay, moving on. We did take the resolution off um, for the public access counselor, but I do want to state this. Um, I believe we put this on the agenda, and even though the governor vetoed it, I do believe that that um, department is very important. I think that he does a wonderful job, and he takes a lot of calls, not just from elected officials, but from the public. I, I don't like the idea that they went ahead and they've changed the time that um, he will serve but it is what it is and there's nothing that we can do at this point to change that so moving on consider contract with butler fairman and cnif for right-of-way purchase of two parcels for bridge for bridge 94 on 200 south over long ditch 
Good evening, Commissioners. Dewey Sullivan, I'm a County Engineer. Yeah, I'm here to uh, request the continuation of the design, which is the phase now we're in of the acquisition of right of way for Bridge 94. It's an item to the original contract, professional engineering contract. Thank you, Secretary. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Roll call. Commissioner Gramarosa. Aye. Commissioner Haney. Aye. Commissioner Brzezinski. Aye. Three zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now we have the three things that we had added on, the three items that we had added on, change to employment policy, employee policy. Can you um, speak on that, Scott? I know this is something that you and Monique Thomas had worked on. Microphone. Microphone. I always forget. All we did was uh, for the commission's uh, consideration was amend or add to section uh, 11 of the employee manual selection and appointment to add paragraph F that would just say part-time, seasonal, intermittent, and volunteer employees must participate in orientation as outlined in paragraph C of this same section, which just talks about or about going through the orientation process. I believe this would be a better practice for insurance and liability purposes if everyone went through the orientation process through the Human Resources Department. So it's a minor addition, but I think it, in my view, it's a better practice, and I'd ask the board to consider it. Thank you. I would make that uh, approve that change that absolutely, absolutely uh, is necessary. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Commissioner Brzezinski? Aye. Commissioner Haney? Aye. Commissioner Gramarosa? Aye. Three zero. The next thing on the agenda is change of policy for blind copying on emails. Now, um, we I would like you to explain kind of what has happened in the past uh, so blind copying is I think in my opinion fine to use when you're using your own personal email but we're in county government and then um, our IT director found an issue with after some training that she had done with our blind copying so can you kind of explain that to us? So um, we do have some individuals that do use blind cap copy and it could be for a good reason you know I'm not sure I really haven't investigated a lot of it but if it goes out to a big crowd maybe they don't want everybody responding to go back out to the big crowds. So the issue came in a you know I was working on a subpoena um, to pull some emails for the court case and realized after I had you know done the training that we don't our system at that time did not archive any blind copies so um, I know like our um, chief deputy auditor when she would send out the agenda because she sends it to a large group she would send it from herself to herself and then blind copy like the agenda list and department heads and everybody else so but it did not archive that so I mean we had no record of that email other than from her and to her so it wouldn't fall into the parameters when somebody did a request of certain emails from you know that went between one person and the next um, I did bring that to the attention of the commissioners and my data board um, so since we have kind of we have fixed we wrote a script and fixed um to where we do archive that now um but it still makes it very difficult very difficult to do a search on particular emails they would have to know exactly you know what was contained in that email because you know it's just it's really hard to to navigate that if um so I had made the recommendation that 
to you know that we not allow blind copy I mean it, it's kind of questionable with the public access counselor I would think with the public access not counselor sorry but public access law you know giving you know a request it's going to make it hard to um, fill that you know I know that there are times like you know our county prosecutor or whoever may need to use that for some reason um, but the, the prosecutor's prosecutors. Office is moving off of our system so that's not going to be an issue anymore he'll still be able to manage his own and the reality is we are we are government and we we should be transparent every single department should be transparent and if you're sending out an email and you have to blind copy somebody on it you're not being very transparent and I can tell you that I myself ran into a situation where I thought I was on a conversation um, on an email with three commissioners and our attorney and then somebody else jumped into the conversation and they were blind copied in and we had no idea that they were blind copied in so I think if we're truly a government entity and we are truly transparent I don't I don't see us having an issue with that your opinion uh, thank you madam president I actually I just have a question for our information technology director from the legal standpoint, the council is just concerned that we can comply with subpoena requests and we can comply with APRA requests. So with the blind function or blind copying function turned off, will, will that solve the problem? Well, it would. It would make it so that, you know, we would be able to pull based on the subpoena request. If it's an email between, you know, Diane and you, or well, your attorney-client privilege, or you know, me and Joe or me and Tim, um, you know, for a certain time frame. If I'm blind copying him at that time, we, you know, previous to me taking the um, class on our archive system did not, you know. We let, let me ask a question a different way. If hypothetically I email you. Yes. And I blind copy the commissioners and auditor stables would you be able to capture I would capture code? the fact well now I would capture it all but um, because you blind so the issue that I ran into is the request was you know so your the subpoena would be not necessarily for emails from you to me it would have been to the commissioners also. And would that be captured? Now it is. It is. Okay. Um, I did speak with Judge uh, Alavisos today, and he said it's very rare that his court would ever use the blind copy. I know that was a concern. Um, Thank you. And uh, Madam President, I'll just share. I, I did speak to some county people that use the county email, and they sometimes what they'll do is they will email themselves just as a reminder, like a to-do list or so forth. And I think the better practice would be, let's say if you're emailing yourself some things, not to blind copy other people, just so we can make sure we, I, I'm just, all I care about is complying with app and subpoena requests, that's all. And, and so we can capture it, so. That was my concern also. Um, and I did speak to certain individuals that use the blind copy for, and that's why I said, you know, maybe they're sending out an email to all users and they don't want any of those responses to go back out to all users. Um, there are very few people that have that ability to email all users, but, or department heads, or, um, you know, people on their distribution list for the agendas or whatever. They don't want, say, if they send it to all of them and they hit reply all, which you know you would think that it, you want to include everybody in the conversation, then sometimes their email gets flooded with you know responses and sure. So I mean that that was Again, my only for transparency. Concern. I mean we are a government entity. Um, I believe that this is not 
your your Yahoo or Hotmail at home. We really don't care what you do at home. I think that we are a public entity and we should conduct ourselves like that. And there should be full transparency. Have you made the motion, Madam President? I'll make the motion that we uh, adopt that policy of uh, uh, did we turn off the blind copying? Yeah. yeah. Sure. I, I think with that, uh, Ms. Hale, maybe we should um, send out some email etiquette to all of our employees. Um, we wind up, uh, and, and elected officials, you know, every once in a while you'll have radio tower goes down, for example, there's like 140 some odd people on that list. And we almost always have one or two folks who will hit reply all and say, thanks for the update. And 144 people are getting thanks for the update when that's an email that the people who say thanks for the update, they don't need to say thanks for the update. <laughs> right. yeah. um, and that it, it's just something that floods our inboxes. That's right. just, you know, and everybody else. I mean, that, that's all the, all the server space we have to take when you account how many times that happens per year. So maybe an email etiquette, like, well, and you there want to reply to it, hit reply, not reply all. Correct. 144 people. And there is a concern things. that, you know, okay, they do hit reply all and, you know, somebody else does and then somebody else does. So you've got 10. Well, at that point, if the original sender sends an email, a different email that says, you know, the tower's back up or it's going to be down for 24 hours or whatever, now you've got a lot of people that probably are not going to pay attention to that email because they've been flooded with the other emails. Yeah. So, I mean, I understand both sides. It was just, you know, so that we would be compliant, you know, and able to access whatever, you know, emails we were supposed to be able to access. Thank you. I'll, I'll second that. And just also for whether it's a BCC or somebody later hits forward, all these emails are public record, and if you're, you shouldn't be sending anything if you don't want it to get sent to somebody else. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Roll call. Commissioner Haney. Aye. Commissioner Gramarosa. Aye. Commissioner Mrazinski. Aye. Three zero. And last but not least, we have an announcement. Um, we have lost our uh, facilities director. Sean Fagan has resigned. Uh, Sean Fitzpatrick has resigned. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and then um, we wanted to do a reappointment for our facilities director. And Anyone have a motion for the reappointment or for an appointment? Yeah, I would uh, make a motion that we uh, appoint uh, Cheryl Lustinsky as the uh, Acting Director of Facilities. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Um, how long has uh, Ms. Lustinsky worked in facilities? Ms. Lustinsky, uh, would you like uh, to come up? Hi. Um, I've been in the position office manager for one year. Okay. Thank you. I've been with the county for 22 years. Do you feel in your, I don't want to turn this do you feel in your one year experience uh, there is, is sufficient to run that department? Absolutely. Absolutely. I've um, been in the budget process for 22 years at my previous position in the payroll department and the auditor's office. Um, I have experience in soliciting proposals for maintenance um, projects. Um, I've worked under the director, assistant director. I filled in when they have been absent. Um, yeah, I definitely have the experience. Thank you. Uh, uh, Commissioner Rosinski, your motion was uh, acting director, I believe, or interim. Or, wait, I'm sorry, no, I apologize. Was Which was it? The motion was for. Director of Facilities. The, the motion, let, me restate, let me restate my motion to uh, appoint Cheryl Lesinski as Director of Facilities. I'll step down as President and second that motion. Roll call. Commissioner Mrazinski. Aye. Commissioner Haney. 
uh, as an acting director, I, I would, as, or interim, I would support that, but with only one year experience and how many other folks there have significantly longer experience, unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to as go from one spot jumping to the other that quickly in one year, so um, I'll have to say no. Sorry. Commissioner Gramarosa. Yay. Sorry? Yay. Yes. A two to one motion passes. So we, can we have a mo um, would you like to say anything? Uh, yeah, um, I thank you all for the consideration and I'm very excited and I'm looking for forward to all the challenges of this position. Yeah. And I will say this about Cheryl. A um, year ago when she got into that position, not only was she doing the office work, she jumped in there. And I know it's probably hard when, when um, you know, I'm a commission, I'm a full-time commissioner, so I'm here all day long, and I kind of see what's overseeing what all the departments do. And Cheryl has really stepped up to the plate when um, we needed help in organizing the girls for the cleaning crews. Cheryl takes off. She makes sure that she stays two, three hours after work and she organizes these girls. She goes out to the facilities. I've driven past Michigan City Courthouse on a Saturday, on a Sunday, on a Tuesday evening and I will see Cheryl's car there because Cheryl, if those girls or anybody's having problems with those buildings, Cheryl is there. I don't have um, I see a lot of, we have a lot of good employees, and we see a lot of employees throughout our county, throughout our departments that really step up to the plate, and they go above and beyond their jobs. And I have to say, Cheryl is definitely one of those individuals. Um, if you don't see it, it's, it's just probably because some people don't spend a lot of time here at work, but I, I really, I love the fact that you have always stepped up to the plate, and I know that you're going to do an excellent job in this position. Thank you. I, yeah, I appreciate it. I agree that. with you, Commissioner. I, I've known Cheryl a long time, and I agree with everything you said. She's a hard worker. Um, I see her around the, the office and different places all the time, and always trying to help people and doing a good job. Thank you. I appreciate it. I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Ramrosa? Aye. Commissioner Haney? Aye. Commissioner Brzezinski? Aye. 3 0. Thank you.